I am going to say some very, very bad words in this video, and two of the worst are sky replacement. Should you do it, and if you're going to, how can you make it look as natural as possible? Stick around for a sample of a sky being replaced, and then at the end of this video, I have some questions and an additional piece of advice that I think is really going to help you. First, before I get into it, I want to say I'm a little uncomfortable making this video because I am not an advocate for sky replacement. I'm more of the enhance, don't replace mentality. But I also acknowledge that the line between digital art and photography is blurring, especially when there's tools that make replacing skies as easy as it is. So I am going to show you a sample on replacing a sky live. Before I do that, there are four things to consider in a sky replacement. You need to look at the light direction. Does the light coming into the foreground match where the sun is in your replaced sky? The amount of light in the photo. Does the amount of the light in the sky match the amount of light in the foreground? Halos. How does the boundary look between the original photo and the replaced sky? I have another video on replacing halos in Lightroom, so be sure to check that out. The best way is to make sure they're not there in the first place. Finally, you need to look at the light color and temperature. Does the temperature of the sky match the temperature of the foreground? Okay, let's do a demo and dive right into this. This is a photograph shot in San Diego. This is the original RAW. I just clicked the auto button here. And here is the processed version of that with the original sky. Let's say we wanted to replace the sky in this photograph. How would we do it? The first thing I would do is go into masking and select sky, which I've already done, so I'm going to unmask that and pump up the exposure. So just make that so that we have a blank white canvas for Photoshop to work with. Once we have that, let's right click on that photo and edit it in Photoshop. Photoshop is then going to open that same photograph. We'll unlock the background layer here. And to replace the sky, we're going to go into Edit and Sky Replacement. And it's going to pull up a menu with a list of skies, and it's automatically going to place the last one that you that you had, that you were working with. First piece of advice here is don't replace a sky with the auto-populated skies that Photoshop has built in. There are millions of users of Photoshop, and all of them have access to the same 10 skies or whatever Photoshop includes. So use your own. Take photos of your own skies that you like, save them, and use them in the future if you're gonna go that route. In this case, this is the sky that I took over the ocean, just really, really unusual. I pre-populated skies into Photoshop for this sample so that we can look at some of these. So let's say that we want more of a orange sunset type of sky. Let's say that we choose this one. Let's look at some things with this. A couple things to consider are the light temperature, which seems pretty close to about right here. I mean, the ocean is a little cool, but we could go in there and change that. And you look at where the sun is setting, and if that makes sense, if the sun was setting here, are the shadows correct? And they're really not. The sun was setting off uh, to the right of this photograph and shining onto this cliff face here. So having the sunset where it is in this sky wouldn't really light up this rock the way that it is. So I wouldn't use that for that sky. What if we use this one? This one's even worse. With if we have, like, these are the things that sometimes people just don't consider because they replace a sky, but we have the sun up here. I mean, it's not illuminating the right, it, it just wouldn't look like this. It looks completely fake. One thing that we could do is go in and flip it. And that starts to make a little bit more sense. The shadows are still a little bit off, but it's not quite as obvious. We still have some temperature stuff to deal with, but that's not a terrible option. We can look at some others. We put some night stuff in here, put some lightning in here. Um, this is a lightning shot that I captured over the ocean. Um, obviously, I mean, that's just stupid. Like, no one's gonna believe that's real and, and we shouldn't even try to pass that off. So don't, just don't be dumb. I think that's rule number one. Don't be dumb. That example is dumb. What about this one? Something like this could work because this implies that the sun is setting off somewhere to the right, which is accurate. I think we would need to go in here and change the temperature of the foreground and the exposure of the foreground a little bit. This is something that we could put potentially work with on a replaced sky. Let's talk about the boundaries and the halos. If we move this up and down, we can see that Photoshop just kind of picked a location for us, but we can move this around a little bit 
and we can see where the horizon is just barely. And then if we move the photo down below, you can kind of see how the color of the sky fades down into the water. And there's even a, like, you can barely see it, but there's even a harsh line here. You need to watch out for that because that's a clear sign of a replaced sky. So you want to place that at or near the horizon as close as possible so that you don't have that. So if we were to do something like this, also be aware of the, the sides on the borders. Watch over here. So if we, like, obviously, I, I've seen people post photos where they have a big line like this on the side. Clearly, they were just sloppy and didn't put that in place. So make sure that that is in place. And then later, if you find that it's a little bit off, then crop it. And then you can hear, here's your, your shift edge and your face edge. Watch what happens when we move shift edge down. You can see that it adds some haze on the horizon and that can be good. That is a good trick to remove some of the halos because if we bring shift edge up into the positive, it makes that harsher line. And I want to show you something here. I'm going to just click OK on this and show you what not to do because that shift edge is gonna pull the sky down into the actual photograph. But look at what it does when we zoom in here. Like it just, it, it takes that background and covers it in the orange of the sky. This is another thing to look for. You can, like when there's been skies replaced, when it, when it looks like this, clearly and obviously a poor job replacing the sky. So don't do that. Don't do that. Make sure the shift edge is, is negative. Just depends on your specific case, but that'll give a little bit of haze on the horizon, which provides more of a transition and a more natural look. And so say we were to pick something like that, we'd, we'd click OK once we're happy with it. And then you can see in your layers, it created a different layer for all these different elements. I will go in there and just select all of those and flatten it or merge it. Um, if we were to flatten that image, then we have everything all in one that we can then edit. And then zoom in and just make sure it looks fine. Look at that, here it doesn't. We have that, that line on the edge, so we need to crop that out. And then we have this harsh line from the sky, which doesn't look good. So we can either go in and like use a blur tool and just add some blur to that. Yeah, even that helps. And this is so far in the background, you know, it's not gonna be all that visible. I would just take that step and blur that and then scroll across your horizon and just make sure it looks okay. This is acceptable. Not perfect, but it's acceptable. And then I'm gonna crop to get rid of that part of the photo that didn't get the sky and then give it a zoom out. I think that looks pretty decent. And then we close that, press save. And then this is gonna open up in Lightroom with that replaced sky, which we can then process the rest of the photograph. And this is what we'll go in and make sure the temperature between the sky and the foreground makes sense. So here, once we're back in Lightroom, then we can select the sky and then duplicate and invert that mask so that we have the original photograph selected. And then we can bring up that temperature a little bit just so that it more closely matches. Yeah, probably something like that. Um, you really need to get creative when you're editing a sky replacement photo because you're obviously dealing with two different photos, two different light sources, and need to do the extra work to make sure that it looks as natural as possible so it looks like one light source instead of two. And this isn't perfect, but it gives you an idea of what that might look like. You can also go in and hit auto and see what Lightroom will do, and that helps. Maybe we'll make the ocean cooler. Yeah, maybe that's how it would look. Look, I don't know, you just have to say, what would, uh, what would this actually look like? And then use the tools at your disposal to make it as close as possible. Because what you don't want is people to come in there and say, dude, you fake your image. And it's like, yeah, like then you're called out. So, so you just want to make sure that this is done with as much detail as possible. So I'm not saying that this one's perfect or that I would share this one. I don't think I would, but it gives you an idea. But then, I mean, let's look at it again. I mean, that's the replaced sky. That's the original. So is it worth the effort? Is it worth the effort to go in there and change that sky out? I don't know. It depends on what type of art you're trying to create and, and what vision you have. I would say if you didn't get the vision that you have, go back out again and try again. You can always create the art you want through post-production and sky replacements and digital art techniques. Or you can go out to the location and continue to try. And then once you finally get it, you're just gonna be in love because it's like, oh my God, all the effort and I finally did it and I got the picture that I wanted to get. That's the way I prefer to work, but we're all different. So 
if you're gonna like whatever you whatever you want to do whatever makes your soul happy is what you need to go out and do what do you think of sky replacement have you done it do you do it often i would love to hear like leave a comment let's talk about this because I, I, there's no right or wrong it's just i'm curious about what people are doing if you're using this tool and what kind of success that you've had with it second is this piece of advice which is if you're gonna replace the sky please disclose it Otherwise, you're risking getting caught in a lie, and that is just never a good thing. Do you agree? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you next time. Thank you for being here.